This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. I'm Eddie, your host, and you're watching The Dean Show. We're here every week, same time, same channel, with some very exciting topics, and one of them is fornication, the evils of it. You know, sex is something that's on the minds of many of the young men and young ladies, even the older men, older ladies, but there's a way that the creator of the heavens and the earth told us and let us fulfill this desire. When you do it the wrong way, you got some bad consequences. So we're going to be talking about some of the evil effects, some good that can come out from doing it the right way, but then also a lot of evil can come out from doing it the wrong way. So we want to do it the right way because death is a reality, it's approaching, and we want to die in the best state. We want to die with our Creator pleased with us and not Him displeased with us because we want to get to Jannah, we want to get to Paradise. So we're going to get some good advice for my friend and Sheikh, Dr. Sheikh Walid Basuni, when we come back here on the Dean Show. Sit tight, don't go nowhere. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. 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 Assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, welcome to the Dean Show. Uh, thank you for having me again. How's Kamal Mekki doing? Doing good, excellent, excellent. He always speaks very highly of you. Oh, uh, he's, he's a wonderful uh, man. So Alhamdulillah, we also, we, we love having him on the show, we love having you on the show, and all the other sheikhs and scholars who, who help to contribute, because we're trying to do things that will benefit the world. Alhamdulillah, I, I just recently saw him in Calgary, he's doing very good. He, wow. he rides now in Calgary. MashaAllah, and, Alhamdulillah. Uh, time is short. We know that you're the Vice President of El Maghrib, which we really encourage people to, if there's a seminar in the locality, their locality, uh, they visit. Thank I also, you. I had a chance to interview, it's coming up soon, the program I did with uh, Mohammed Sharif. Excellent. How's he doing? Very good. He just went uh, to Hajj and he's doing very well. Alhamdulillah, excellent. He's Mas doing very good. MashaAllah. So we recommend for people to visit these classes that you teach and some of the other sheikhs, Yasser Qadi, and Sheikh uh, B, Rijas. Yes. How absolutely. are they doing? Very good, very well. They're doing very well. We give them very the well. salams too. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So you're also an Imam, and this would be a spiritual leader for the yes. community in the CLIC? Yeah. Clear, Clear Lake Islamic, Islamic Center? Center? Okay. So you give advice. You're used to tackling a lot of the issues that the community's having, and I'm sure this is a big one. This is a big one. So the young man or young woman comes to you and says, You look, I just can't get women off my mind. I just can't, you know, I, I, I can't let go of my girlfriend. I just can't, you know, I'll pray, I'll do the other things, but it's just so difficult, Shay. It's just so difficult to let it go. It's my weakness. Allah will forgive me. You know, it just make dua for me, Shay. How, how do you, what advice do you give to this young man? Uh, first of all, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. All praise due to Allah and His praise and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, his family, his companions, and his followers until the day of judgment and all the prophets and messengers and their followers. Uh, you know, Eddie, it's, it's a, so unique the way you, you put it. Uh, it's not only today. Yes, today it's more than ever because all these sexual uh, messages and uh, basically urge that drive our sex drive very high. You can see it in the street and videos and DVDs and your cell phones. There's so many messages out there it just lead people toward that direction and to fall into the haram, the forbidden things, which is fornication. But this is the nature of human being. Allah created him with and her with lust, the, the, the sexual lust, the part of our nature as human. And, and it's, it's hard to resist sometimes. A man came to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and said, Ya Rasulullah, O Prophet, of, O Messenger of Allah, I'm a young man. And I want you to give me a permission to fornicate. He want, he's asking the messenger of yeah, God. Yeah, he came to the permission. messenger. He said, Would you give me a permission to fornicate? 
He's basically he, saying, just hook me, just get, hook me up, give me some leeway to do what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, not hook me up, but I mean, you know, give me a permission. It's yeah. okay for me to do that because I'm a young man and my lust is so strong and I cannot control myself. Yeah. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, and this woman that you're going to marry uh, or to fornicate with, uh, can you imagine uh, this happened to your sister? Oh, he now I think a little bit now. Then he said, no, I wouldn't like my sister to fornicate with any man. Would you like your mother? He said, no, I wouldn't my mother to be fornicated with any man. He said, oh, so this is exactly the same thing. That woman that you want to fornicate with her, she is a sister or a mother of someone. She might be a sister or a mother for someone else. So as you don't want it to happen to your sister and mother, nobody would like this to happen to their sisters and mothers. And he said, oh, young men, Oh, young man, if you cannot, if you have a problem and struggle with this issue, fast. Fasting, because when you fast, basically, and you pre fasting it means you prevent, uh, you don't eat from the daytime all the way to the night, or drink, or involve in any sexual activity or thoughts. So this is, will give you strength. And he said it will weak, weaken your, weaken your uh, sexual drive, uh, this fasting. So this is a solution. He said in the beginning, sorry, he said, Oh young man, whoever capable of getting married, let him or her get married. So number one solution for this, those who have high sex drive, or basically they, are, they cannot control the sexual laws, is to get married. You know, there is nothing more important than protecting your religion. It's, it's more important than anything else. Anything else. Once a young lady came and she said, I want to marry this man. I'm a foreigner student, I came from overseas, and I'm studying medicine here, and I cannot protect myself. And I want to marry this man, my father said, I cannot marry until basically I, I graduate. And I, ta I, ta I ta told her father, how can you, you don't care about her religion, all what you care about the degree? What's the degree will do her when she go in her grave? And basically she end up marrying, alhamdulillah, and to protect her, her herself. She doesn't want to do what is not right. So Islam and all religions, alhamdulillah, have provided the natural solution, the right, the clean, the pure solution for us, which is basically uh, go ahead and get married. And if you cannot get married, if you cannot get married, you can, this does not justify for, for you to go and to fornicate. You have to resist this temptation. You have to always remember that this is a great sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he mentioned the greatest sin that any human can do, he said, uh, uh, he said that the true the believers are the one and uh, they will not worship other than Allah, with Allah. Then, وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ And they will not kill anyone. They will not kill innocent soul. Then third, وَلَا يَزْنُون And they will not fornicate. Those are these three things that Allah mentioned here identify who is the believer. And he said, anyone will commit one of these sins, يضاعف له العذاب. He will, his punishment will be multiplied in the day of judgment. Will be multiplied. So, fornication is a major sin. It's a sin in every religion. In every religion. And all societies realize the dangers of fornication. How it would lead to the weakness of the society. Where basically, uh, uh, will have... Uh, children from wedlock, where basically uh, uh, the highest number of domestic abuse happen here in our country to die, it is because of those who will have a relationships out of marriage. There is the domestic violence, the rate between the couple who are married, way low than others, way low than others, than those who are basically uh, uh, the relationship based on uh, in fornication or just girlfriend, boyfriend. I know this in English a little bit, in America it's, it's kind of different in the West. The word fornication mainly means somebody will have a sexual activity with an, another partner while one of them is married. Mm -hmm. But in Islam, this is not how we identify, how we define fornication. Fornication is to have sexual activity or intercourse with a woman or with a man that he, uh, with the other than your spouse, period. Out of marriage. Out of marriage. This is illicit sexual activity that is prohibited in Islam. In Islam and every religion. Every religion, yeah, definitely. Okay, we're going to be right back with more here on the D Show. Sit tight, don't go anywhere.
go down and take the books. Put the books in front of you and read them. Read the Quran. Don't be afraid. The question is about whether Muslims are or not good citizens. The Constitution defines what a good citizen is. And the preamble says, We the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union, to establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility. To any Muslim that can say that is a good Muslim. And most Muslims can say that. Most Muslims will embrace that. Most Muslims are good Americans. This is the Dean. This is the Dean. No problem. You can take my daughter to dinner. You and my daughter and me. Let me tell you something. It's natural. That's the idea. God created it. And He created us to have a good time. Mm -hmm. We should have a good time. Only with our wives, though. Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. And most of the converts are women, not men. They see that the rules of Islam, instead of constraining them, the rules set them free. Back here on the Dean Show. And we are continuing talking about fornication, illicit sexual activity outside of marriage. It's a class X felony. You know, the felony uh, with the creator. You know, you have certain laws. Yes. And if you break these laws, they're classified. So major sin can we classify as a class X felony with the creator? Absolutely. Absolutely. Allah subhanahu the Prophet said, La yazni zani hina yazni wa mu'min. The fornicator, when he or she fornicate, they are not in a status of faith. They are they lose their faith. And if they repent, that's where they regain the faith again. But somebody fornicate that means he has no faith. His faith is so weak as if it's not exist. As if it's not exist. So it's it's a sign of the weakest sign of Yani. That means your Iman is in the lowest, lowest level ever can be re can reach. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a major sin, the Prophet said. Uh, Allah said, as I said earlier, uh, their sin, their punishment will be multiplied and will stay in this punishment forever. The Prophet said, I seen the fornicators are naked, gathered uh, in, in, a, in like a container and a fire underneath of them, burning them. And when he said, who's those people? Jibreel told him, this, this is the punishment of the fornicator. Uh, 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 among your ummah, I mean your nation, those who will commit this sin. So no doubt it's a major sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates it and, and curses those who are uh, doing it. So anybody involved in this uh, sin must repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And get out quickly, huh? Absolutely. T tell us now for, because we have a lot of not yet Muslims, and non-Muslims who watch our show, so, you know, as they continue to watch, they see that Islam, the way of life of all the messengers of God, it makes sense. If they take an analytical, scientific approach, they'll come to the same conclusion as what 1.5 billion people have across the globe, that this is indeed from the creator of the heavens and earth. And all the injunctions, all the beautiful things that we implement are good for us, and the things we stay away from are things that are harmful, harmful for ourselves, our family, and society. And this is one of those things, illicit sexual intercourse outside of marriage. So tell us for the person who's thinking, he's just so used to this casual way of dating, you know, test driving, and you know, living with the woman maybe for two, three years before you marry her, and he says, what's the big deal, old Muslim? It's two consenting adults. What do you got to say? You know, uh, there is a, a friend uh, of mine, uh, he went to uh, a meeting for the school, his son in public school. So they were discussing the issue of sex education, and basically, uh, uh, it was a discussion. I don't know what was the purpose of that discussion, but what I, the teacher over there, she basically uh, gave them uh, a piece of paper, and basically gave one of them a piece of paper, and they went to eat. So this brother, because it has some kind of food that he's not uh, familiar with, he didn't eat it, so he didn't participate with them. So after they came back, the teacher asked, Okay, who had this paper? He said, yes. He said, did, who did you shake hand with when you were socializing the food? He said, I did. So they said, basically, and she was talking about how sex out of marriage can transfer these disease, sexual transmission disease, can spread so quickly. And she said, by you contacting this person, this person contact this person. So this is getting everywhere. So she'll talk about the importance of knowing some information about these issues and so that Muslim brother strike him, he said, hello, I didn't shake any hands with any one of these guys. I didn't 
didn't participate in this. So I didn't get affected. Wow. And he said, do you know why? Because I choose the methods of abstinence. I, I stayed away from it. That's why I'm protected. So the Prophet Sallallahu the Hadith of Ibn Majah said, any nation, any nation will basically commit zina, adultery, or homosexuality, or anything like that from this nature, and they will practice it openly without shame, being shamed of it. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah will punish them by diseases that it was never exist in the nations before them. And all these sexual transmitted disease that we discover today and we're suffering from all these uh, uh, yeah, and the hundreds of thousands of people die, unfortunately, and my heart goes for those who die from AIDS, from these diseases. Uh, a lot of them, even innocents, like kids and stuff like that. It is because of what? Because of what? What the transmission sexual disease in the United States, what's the statistic today? Talk about pregnancy, a teenager pregnancy. Talk about this children's out of wedlock. What's the percentage? Very high. And all these diseases that you see psychologically, and physically, it is because people practice adultery. People practice, for, they fornicate. They basically have uh, uh, illicit sex uh, outside of marriage. And that's punishment. But if you obey Allah and you obey His law, you will be protected from this and no need to spend millions and millions of dollars uh, and resources and people die in, in, in all these years in this process because people fulfill their desire in an illegal way. Now, you see that, I mean, Islam is the natural way. Everything you do in it, it brings you peace and happiness. And it makes sense that you fulfill this desire within marriage, within some confines that are good for you. There's structure here, and that protects yourself, your family, and society. But, I mean, if you do it like just your own way, and you do it how, you know, this, this way that's not pleasing to the Creator, all you got to do is turn on Jerry Springer or Montel, and you see 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds, 12-year-olds, they're following the parents, bad examples probably, and you see what's happening, the evil effects yeah, of fornication, it's, isn't yeah. it? It's, it's, it's actually disgusting when you just think about it, you know, when you, when you just fornicate, and you just, you know, it's just about fulfilling my desires, and, with this woman or without or hiring a, a prostitute just to fulfill my desires and move on in my I, you know the way I look to my sister the way I look at my brother is, is way more respectful than that more just go and release myself and her and, and, and move it's not like a public uh, bathroom. bathroom you yeah. just go release yourself and go this is so disgusting I think this is wrong and, and absolutely I wouldn't like this to happen to my family to myself and I would say uh, there is the purity in marriage, the happiness in marriage, security is in marriage, is not outside the marriage. Islam looking to build a strong society, a strong society, not following, not fulfilling their desires in halal and haram, why? To be a slave to your desire. I'm going to be a little tough here, please bear with me. Some people, you know, we, it was a family show, but isn't it easy to be a dog or a hoe, but it's different to be on a way that's disciplined, a way that you restrain yourself in those desires that are coming out, it takes a little bit of effort not to curse. It takes a little bit of effort to hold back when you're, di when you're angry and, and to be of better character. It's easy to just let loose, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. And that's why, that's what differentiates us from animals. <laughs> animals that just go with anyone, you know? Uh, that's, we're not like that. We're human beings. Allah honored us and give us the strength to control our desire. Yeah. So now we are <laughs> almost out of time. Let, we'll take one break and we'll come back and wrap okay. it up. Is that all right? Yeah. Thank you. We'll be right back here in the Dean Show. Okay, you've got your dream home and you've got your dream car, but you're going to get old and things are going to happen to you in your life. And then what have you got? At the end of the day, it's an empty dream that has no real foundation. We are going to die and we're going to meet our Lord and He is going to judge us. It becomes an obligation for each single human being to find out what the Qur'an is. Islam is telling us to stay away from things which are bad for your person and bad for the society. Islam prohibits killing of innocent human beings. Human life is precious. And if we're going to worship something, I figured I might as well worship the Creator instead of any of the creations. Now, you know, upon investigating all the religions, I remember finding out the meaning of what Islam is, what a Muslim is. 
those who surrender their self to God is a Muslim. Those who surrender, submit to God, God's will. That is it. Islam was pure. It was just, you just pray to God, your creator. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If Allah lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand Back here on the Dean Show with Dr. Sheikh Walid Basuni, and we're talking about the evil consequences of fornication. Class X felony, we establish that, and you open yourself up to the punishment of the creator of the heavens and the earth, and this is something that you need to repent for right away. But tell us, those young youth, okay, sisters in hijab, and, and, and they're, they're dressing modestly, and the brothers also trying to lower their gaze, but now they, they feel the heat's coming on, you know, the attraction to the opposite gender. They want to get married, they do what they want to do it right, but how do you got the parents? You know, they're, they're in, let's say, the last year of, of high school. You know, they're at the age, legal age, that they can get married. But the parents now, they want them to get the master's degree, you know, the diploma. And they're, like, fighting their kids on this. What advice do you have for the parents? Uh, first of all, I'll tell the parents that uh, if you have a son or daughter that can pair the responsibility of getting married, encourage them to get married. I'm in favor of marrying in, in early ages. As long as they can pair the consequence of marriage, they can take the responsibility of marriage. That's a beautiful thing to do. If you can help them, please do. Uh, also, I would like to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, we know that not everybody can get married. And people exposed to sexual desire before even get the legal age for getting married. Yeah. And they have this desire. What's the solution? What's the solution? First of all, uh, I love what one of the Muslim scholars uh, uh, said, which is named Al-Ghazali, Imam Al-Ghazali, He said, this lust is like fire. The more you add to it, it will not go away. It will get bigger and bigger. A lot of people think by fulfilling their desire, it will come down. I want to tell you that's not true. It will, the fire will become bigger and bigger and bigger. If you fornicate one time, you're not going to just come down. You're going to need more. It's You'll like never be fire. happy, never be satisfied. And it will never go away. Wow. It will be stronger, like adding more wood to the fire, more gas to the fire. The fire will become bigger. It will never go away. You're not going to put it out by doing and fulfilling the desire. The only way to cut it, this desire, uh, to put it out, this fire, is not to add any more woods to it, not gas to it. It's basically to stop, to avoid this. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, "Wala taqrabu zina." He didn't say, don't fornicate. He said, don't come closer to fornication. And he don't do anything can lead to fornication. That's why in Islam, women have been asked to dress modestly. So it will not send these sexual signals for those who have sick heart or mind thinking sexually about their opposite gender. So that's why she dressed modest. The Islam said, don't be with a woman alone in one place, in one room, in a hotel room, or in a, in a close, uh, uh, basic, in, a, in an apartment, you and her alone, if she's not related to you. Uh, why? Because you might, that might happen between you guys, between them, what is uh, haram, like fall in fornication or sexual activity take place. Uh, we're not saying everybody will do that, but Islam closed the door. Don't get, take a chance. Islam said you're not allowed to touch a woman while with lust. You're not allowed to look at women with desire. And the moment you feel that you're looking at her and you are sexually thinking about her sexually, you have to to move your get lower your gaze. If you touch a woman and there is a desire in this touch, you're not allowed to do uh, to do so. Uh, also, Al Islam told us that uh, we're not allowed to listen or to do what can uh, drive our sexual drive very high while we cannot contain it. You're not married, you're single. What would you do? Uh, by, for example, like looking at pornographies, looking at web, uh, pictures, magazines, movies that come out, basically raise my sexual drive very high. And then what? Uh, 
from the beginning Islam, don't do that, don't look at this. So protect you. It keep you very far away from what is the, where is the zina is. And this is one aspect of it. Also the other uh, part of it, Al-Islam asks us to be pure, always to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to look at our sister, our brothers, as brothers and sisters. We don't look at them as sexual objects. Also, it orders us uh, uh, basically to fast, to pray, to, uh, to keep ourselves busy with, with things that it will occupy our mind and, and so forth. So you will not be thinking about this and you will have control over your sexual drive. So eliminate all those promiscuity, uh, th things of promiscuity on the television, movies, they might get your sex drive up, eliminate this, no pornography, no self-pleasure, none of this stuff? Yes. This is, this is only add to it, it's not going to deflame it. Absolutely. Yeah, okay, and I think this is so powerful, lowering the gaze. Because yes. if, if it goes from here to the heart and then somewhere else, you're going to get some trouble. Yeah, absolutely. So this is powerful, isn't it? It is. It is. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, and he talked about adultery and the punishment of those who commit adultery and fornication. After that, he said, I order the believer, male and females, to lower their gaze. Mm -hmm. So he ordered them because that would lead to those most of the time. Yes. Okay, so last, last point. Tell us right now for that person male or female, they might have lived a life, he might have lived the life of a dog, she might have lived the life of a, you know, a, 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 a I said it earlier, I'm, I'm just feel timid. Okay, share, whatever. You know, yeah. the, uh, the, the, uh, fulfilling their desires. Fulfilling her desires, as a whole, let's say. And she don't want to be in that state anymore. And she feels the heaviness, the burden of the sin. Is there any hope for them? If they leave it right now, they repent and change their way? What advice do you have for them? Uh, first of all, I'll say, cut it off completely. Repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Repent to Allah and ask Him to forgive you. And I guarantee you, you will not find anything but an open arm from your Lord, welcoming you back and forgiving you and helping you and aiding you and will transfer your sin to, good, to, to a reward after it will be forgiven and it will be erased from your uh, uh, book of records and you will meet him pure and clean, insha'Allah ta'ala. Don't give up in the, ever in the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah, after he mentioned these three sins that I said in the beginning, the, the, the shirk, the associating other with Allah, and killing an innocent soul, and fornicating, he said after that, that those who repent to me, and they switch, they start doing good, Allah promised them that he will reward them, and he will be pleased with them. So don't ever give up the hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I promise you, you will, not, you will find nothing less than a God who's welcoming you, a Lord that He will help you and aid you to start a new clean life. This is very exciting to know, to know. Thank you for Thank the you great advice. Much. May God Almighty Allah reward you. We look forward to having you back inshallah. Thank you very much for having again, me. For some more shows. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Deen Show. Some great and wonderful advice from our Sheikh. If you're involved in this, turn your life around. Stop. Reflect. Reflect about the beautiful things that the Creator of the Heavens and Earth has given you. Work to please Him. Remember the home that you're going to be in six feet under. And you want to go in that hole with good deeds racked up, not bad deeds. And this is a class X felony with the creator of the heavens and earth. It's a major sin. It's a major law break. You don't want to be in that state in the grave and this follows you with you. Stop this. Change those bad deeds into good deeds. Repent and he's the most loving, the most merciful. He welcome you with open arms and continue to come back here to the Dean Show. Until next time, peace be unto you. In every individual there comes a day Where they need to take a second just to contemplate about life Man, I wonder why Am I living it just to die? Beating, I'm breathing, my days decreasing God, please hear me and yeah, give me the reason why You brought me in this life the truth I won't deny Sometimes it gets so depressed I'm stressed No control of my soul Like a hole in my chest Can't sleep at night So I drive into the open Watch the stars While I listen to the ocean Ooh.